Who the heck cancels lunch with Warren Buffett and a lunch worth 4.6 million USD? Well, Justin Sun did. I believe everyone's familiar with the name Justin Sun. Uh, we all know him as the founder of Tron and the founder of BitTorrent. But in today's China's Who's Who video, let's dive deep into who Justin Sun is outside of Tron and outside of BitTorrent. Well, Justin Sun, in my opinion, is an attention seeker. He loves having everyone's eyes on him way before social media was a thing. Way back in uni days, he studied at Peking University and he publicly and violently criticized his university. He was also one of the leaders of, you know, causing troubles in university. And his popularity has actually risen after uh, multiple confrontations with the university. And eventually, he had his face up on Asia Weekly, which is a very popular magazine in Asia. And after Peking University, he went to University of Pennsylvania. And this is where he actually discovered crypto and started investing in Bitcoin himself. After studying abroad for a few years, he came back to China and founded Raybull Technology. So Raybull Technology never did very well, but Justin Sun still had a lot of press coverage on Chinese TV shows or even the World Economic Forum, which is pretty weird because your project isn't even well known. Would you want to hear a founder of some random project talk in conference that you're attending? No, right? But, but it's weird that people still invited him to talk at conferences because of who he is, and how much noise he's made for himself. So finally, what made him actually famous in the crypto space is that in 2017, he founded Tron and Tron had its ICO in 2017, September, which was just a few days before the Chinese government decided to ban the ICO in China. And according to The Verge, actually, um, Justin Sun knew about um, China wanting to ban ICOs in China and purposely pushed um, the Tron's ICO forward. Well, after Tron's ICO, um, Justin Sun obviously made a lot of money. If not, how would he be able to place a $4.6 million bid to have a private meal with Warren Buffett? What's even more surprising is that he later wrote that he had to postpone the private meal with Warren Buffett. You know, with the amount of attention Justin Sun demands for and likes, it makes me wonder if he actually has kidney stones. Because who on earth would cancel on Warren Buffett? So eventually, they still had a private meal together, and prior to the meal, Justin Sun gifted Warren Buffett a phone with cryptocurrencies and Bitcoin in it. And this is such a savage move from Justin because Warren Buffett was known to be very skeptical about cryptocurrencies back then. Anyways, back to how he's probably one of the most attention-seeking in the crypto space. So Justin Sun was actually more active on Weibo initially. He follows very closely on the trending news and doesn't hesitate to hop on the bandwagon to discuss or give his two cents on the matter. So first up has to be OFO going to bankruptcy. Um, OFO is a bike sharing company and they announced on Weibo saying that they're going to bankruptcy and a lot of their customers were affected. Justin Sun publicly replied on Weibo saying that he doesn't mind paying the deposits back to the 10k customers that are affected on behalf of OFO and told OFO that, you know, all projects and all companies go through hard times and they can take their time in paying Justin Sun back. Another incident is that uh, someone on Weibo told Justin Sun that an employee from a Hong Kong entertainment company has to leave his job because he has an incurable disease. And Justin Sun being Justin Sun replied publicly to the person saying that he is in contact with this person and he's paid for all of his medical fees and told everyone not to worry about this person. Like, it's great that Justin Sun is doing, you know, all these charity work, helping different people, but it's honestly none of his business, right? Okay, one last incident is that, um, so when you go on Weibo or you go on Justin Sun's page, you often see that a lot of his followers will reply to him saying that, uh, asking Justin Sun to send them money because they want money to buy some Toronto tokens. Um, they want to donate to the charity on behalf of Justin Sun. So for example, if I'm asking Justin Sun for, you know, 500 USD, if he actually sends me $500 USD, I'll also match his $500 USD and send a total of 1K USD to the charity. I'll also attach my Alipay QR code. Alipay is a payment app that is very popular in China and everyone uses it. We often see that classic Justin Sun will reply to these publicly saying that, oh, he's already sent over the money. He also attach a few savage replies or jokes here and there. But it's later revealed that most people he sends money to usually has a huge following and they can have up to, you know, 100K followers on Weibo. Meaning that Justin Sun is doing it for popularity. So the reason why I think that he's very attention seeking is that 
Because usually when people do charity, they're very low key about it. They don't want their names to be written in block letters telling everyone that, oh, I've donated a certain amount to this charity. But Justin Sun announces it himself and um, tells it to the whole Weibo or even the whole world. So there are a lot more examples of him being attention seeking. But the most recent one has to be the SEC suing Justin Sun for selling unregistered securities uh, related to sales and promotions of Tron and BitTorrent, as well as suspecting that Justin Sun was wash trading, manipulating the price of Tron. After reading this news, the first question that popped up to my mind is, is this enough coverage for you, Justin? Okay, although it may seem like I've been shitting on Justin Sun in this entire video, I'm actually very impressed by how he's able to make a name for himself. For example, he's the permanent representative of Granada and WTO. Um, he's also the owner of Huobi now. He's like this mischievous kid amongst the crypto founders group. And you never know when he's going to misbehave. Just yesterday, he staked 4 billion USD in Binance's um, Sway farming pool. And CZ immediately called him out on Twitter saying that this is not allowed because this is for retail investors and not whales like you. Anyways, that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. If you find this episode helpful, don't forget to like, share, and comment down below to let us know who you want us to feature in the next China's Who's Who video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you'll never miss out on anything crypto related. And until next time, bye!